everybody. Welcome to the fire escape. Hey, y'all. Uh, roll. Or should roll. I say? Or should I say? Carol. 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 Do you see what Carole. I did there? Carol. Nah. Car. Carol. The virus. Carol. Terrible. Uh, terrible jokes. I feel like my life has just become one big terrible joke. Like one sort of big cosmic terrible joke. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think that's how everyone feels, but I think it's I mean, mostly I just I, you, to be I think completely probably, honest. I'm I'm blaming myself for this all of this. This is all actually. happening. This is all happening just just because you're in the world and just to affect you. Well, of course, you Mainly. know, most psychologists would agree with you know that every human has the ability to self narrativize of you know, and they and they see themselves as the hero of their own story, obviously. Mm -hmm. But but I don't. I don't see myself as the hero. I just see myself as the villain. <laughs> and, uh, I see myself more as a. And I feel I'm like, like a... this 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 event. I feel like I feel a deep sense of guilt about it. Yeah, that makes sense. I'm, see, I see myself as just like a plucky sidekick, you know? Yeah. I'm like the, uh, I'm like like... the uh, Hispanic dude in Ant-Man. That's me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You that know? makes sense. Michael Pena. That's it. That's me. Yeah, I see myself as a non-playable character in a, uh, <laughs> in a, in a, a large fantasy uh, RPG. So I'm just trying yep. to give quests and maybe... You're, figure you're out. the wizard who falls out of the sky in uh, Morrowind. Just, yeah, just uh, randomly. Just, yeah. I see myself as Sauron's evil eye in The Lord of the Rings. Oh, yeah, the Eye of Sauron, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm at the yeah. top of that mountain casting out um, coronavirus vibes. I feel like, you know, it was probably when I got shingles in January that this all began. I mean, I know oh, some yeah. people are, I know some people are saying that it, you know, sprung up from a market in China, but Fake news, you know. I think actually it was probably me getting shingles in a village in West Wales in early January. Well, how did that pangolin get the coronavirus in the first place? You know what I mean? It had to be. Yeah, there's a butterfly effect. So a uh, exactly a corgi a corgi wiggles its butt in West Wales, and then, you know, <laughs> chain of, chain of events, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, is everybody practicing the power of the pants like myself? Oh, oh yeah, the no. power of the pants, man, dude. Pete isn't. Pete's out here practicing the power of the of the shorts in the rain. Hey man, I'm, I'm washing. I'm getting clean, saving water. Yeah, this is true. <laughs> have you um have you uh have you scattered um lots of pots and pans on the roof to collect water? Oh yeah, dude. Whole whole thing. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna draw. Just I have a bunch of sponges up here. You know, <laughs> <laughs> a baby pool. Just gonna squeeze out my socks so I can have yep. something to drink this evening. Pete's right. got a little. Uh, so I'm gonna, lick, I'm gonna lick my own armpit. <laughs> Pete has a uh, has a uh, a tiny racquetball with a uh, paw print for a face on it. I'm like, you know, it's New York. We don't have enough space for a volleyball, but yeah, racquetball. That's his, that's his one friend now. <clears throat> it's true. It's true. Well, there is a uh, there is a, a national tragedy going on going on right now, and that's that. Uh, Dual fucking Tom Brady is not going to be on the Patriots next year, bro. Oh my God! Say it's not true. Don't don't do that to me right now, okay? It's, it's true, though. It's true. <laughs> yeah. Is Tom Brady that guy who goes out with the supermodel? Married to <laughs> yes. Yep, that's the one. Married Got to it. her. Kissed his son on the mouth. You know that's that actually might be. Let's we need to go back and check and make sure that's not patient zero. True. Tom Brady's poor son who got kissed on the mouth. Uh, mm. Yeah, man. So we're all, uh, this is the first, this is not the first ever uh, no. triple call-in episode. Uh, we've done we've many of those We've triple called before. in all in the same city before. <coughs> we have, yeah. Yep. Have we? I feel like this is, I yeah, feel like this is the first, yeah, uh, yeah, I think we have, yeah, we did, yeah, yeah. I think this yeah, might be the first episode where suddenly, like, what we do like you know everyone else is literally ev no everything no it doesn't matter obviously it doesn't matter no, it, but like it um, it. <laughs> but, yeah, but mm. i just <laughs> i was just about to say that suddenly the rest of the world is literally sitting on its fire escape because it can't go anywhere else yeah this I is mean, the, the, the first the, time I mean, everybody's the world, doing our life yeah the world the world is on fire <laughs> so they're sitting on the fire escape man Mm -hmm. Just like we do every week. So I just want to we say to everybody, I just want to say to everybody, welcome. Welcome. It's yeah. been, yeah. It's been a couple of years, but I'm glad you, I'm glad you made it at last. Yeah. 
All the, welcome can, to our world. You can get out on the fire escape and sing some Italian songs with your neighbors. Well, it, I'm in, I'm in, I'm back in Wales, as absurd as that sounds. And of course, you know what's happening here is the same thing as happens every day, which is just people singing hymns up and down the street, you know, up the mountains and the valleys. Mm-hmm. You know, yep. so we everyone here saw that Italian video and we're just like, this is this is new. This is a new thing. <laughs> We've yeah. been singing Tom Jones We've been out doing here. this, yeah. I What's mean, like, it's like it's, it's, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, you know, we're all just we're we're all just here going like my pet dragon. I've got out in the kennel has been like singing Mafanwi like nonstop for the last two hundred years. So I don't know what's so new about all this, man. Everyone's just like, but you know, that's probably because this is the uh, this is the epicenter of it all, anyway. So we know what we need to do. Yeah. Okay. So True. I for those who are not watching the uh, the video version, which is going to be on YouTube, because why not? Uh, oh, you got to do something. Video? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Are, you that means you got to stop picking, stop picking your nose, Pete. That's right. <laughs> huh? What? Yeah. Don't touch your face. Don't touch your face. <laughs> Don't touch your face. Uh, I am obviously in the here in the basement, the uh, the venerable basement. Uh, looks like Pete is on his roof in the rain. Uh, it's true. Happy St. Patrick's Day, everybody. Uh, yep. And... Dude, I actually got so dig this, listeners and friends, video friends. I uh, in my you know I I've I've been kind of low key preparing for this my whole life. You know I'm like a touch <laughs> on that side. Got a prepper, uh, prepper Pete. They call him prepper uh, Pete. I I don't actually prep. I just think about prepping a lot. You know, like I'm like a I'm like a. I'm like a really bad prepper. That's, what, that's sort of, what I. What sort of thoughts do you have? Do you, do they just pop into your head? You're just like I need more beans. Does that know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, but, but my 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 like lazy, uh, ill preparing uh, abilities it, it really paid off because so last week, you know, the early last week, obviously everything has changed so quickly. It's it don't it seems like the things I did last week were uh, two months ago, but yeah, mm-hmm. literally we'll get onto that momentarily yeah. when I yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. my life, man. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> so I I went I just I, you know kind of got this funky feeling you know I think like probably like a lot of us and i was just like you know what i'm gonna go ahead before it gets insane i was like i'm gonna go and just get some canned food and some you know just like a little bit of full-blown like emergency stuff and i went i I went by a couple of the uh you know the grocery stores and there were long lines and whatever so i I went to the bodega and bodegas were stocked stocked and uh and so in a uh in a beautiful moment of synchronicity and and prepper prepper dude I uh, I just I went to Bodega and got some canned stuff and two of the cans that I got out of the out of the fourteen because I got one for each day. <clears throat> I uh, got two cans of corned beef. Oh, so tonight nice. we will be having corned beef hash. Nice. Uh, for, yeah, all, that's, all that's uh, co- co- I think corned beef hash is considered to be prepper meal one hundred and one. I mean, that's like the fundamental. That's like, well, that's what I'm, but that's, that's what like I'm the saying. that's the patient zero of, of of prepper dinner. I think. Yeah, that's why I was just like, well, I'm going to get this. You know, this is just like a, a jar of preserved meats. This is going to work. And then it also, I totally forgot about it being St. Patty's Day coming up. And that's the that's the synchronicity and prepper to all coming together into one beautiful little canned, you know, meat. In In similar synchronicity, the thing I am most prepared on, the thing I have the most like overstack of is liquor. Oh yeah, so. damn dude. Share, <laughs> share some. I've got four beers left. Oh man, dude. I bought. I was like, man, I might as well get some more whiskey because you know, who drink, knows? Drink away the yeah, drink away the pain, man. I'm gonna. But, I'm. I'm probably gonna go buy some more this week just in case they shut down like all stores. Yep. Like, is is it stores. over yet? Because <laughs> unlike unlike more civilized regions of this nation in this world, New York does not sell liquor in grocery stores. So, nope. So if we go to a, no, an, a, an all shut down only grocery stores, I'm gonna need to be a little bit more yeah, prepared nope. than I currently am. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty unprepared. I need to get some liquor on that front for sure. But that's mostly just for Molotov cocktails for when the Russians come. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> the Russians are coming, or the liberals. Yeah. The liberals are coming. That's right. Yeah, the liberals. See, that's much way more. I'm not prepared for this type of. Uh, you know, mentally at least, you know, my mental preparations all come from the more like militarized uh, apocalypse, you know, it's, yeah. it's less so the contagion apocalypse. Our mental preparations, 
as you know like what's the i mean being mental mentally prepared for one of those things what's the difference in being mentally prepared and not being mentally prepared versus just being physically re- prepared you know what i mean i'm glad you asked um <laughs> <laughs> Pete's been really, thinking about this for for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> really, really, what my mental preparedness is is you sit around, oftentimes with with a couple buds. I, mean, I know, see, Bob, you have been uh, a part of some of this mental preparedness exercises, where I, I just sit there and say, "Oh, if this was if this happened, this is definitely what I would do." Now that I'm in the apocalypse scenario, I'm not doing any of those things. Yeah. Uh, so that's, you know, there's, there's a key difference uh, in, in the mental preparedness versus the physical preparedness. And it's keeping it just here, never yeah. enacting it physically. Mm-hmm. You just got to keep it here. This is true. You know, that's that's the difference. How will you look? Uh, what, what are you plotting right now? Where are you, first of all? Well, as you can see, like, I've got my sort of my sort of, this is my prepper gear. Yeah. Yep. Oh, which can, can, constitutes a warm hat mm-hmm. and a fleece. Mm-hmm. And also, Seabob, you'll be very pleased to see. I actually don't think I can get my foot up high enough. I can't. Can you see it? Can oh, you see pants. Uh, No. One sec. Can you see the boot? Ah. Uh, from, the shoe ho- from the shoe hospital in Birmingham itself. The same boots. Hot dog. I call my Must Birmingham shoe hospital suited and booted. Um, that's it. Uh, I don't have anything um, else prepared, but I am. I am. I mean, you don't have like canned scones and. Uh... No, no, no. I've got none of that. But um, I've got some sausages in the fridge. Eight of them. Eight sausages. Mm-hmm. You can live a long and time off of eight sausages. I have four tangerines at the moment. Mm-hmm. I also have a pot of marmite and half an avocado. I've got some coffee and some tea. But I also. Have a brother and a and his wife, my sister-in-law, and two nephews in another house who are getting regular shops in. I mean, I'm actually self-isolating because I got a long-haul flight three days ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my little brother has asthma, and so is in doesn't want to take the risk, which is very understandable. I mean, I got on a it wasn't a busy long-haul flight, but and it came from Nashville, where I think there was one confirmed case by the time I left. But I think that's not really the point, is it? You know, and then I had to get a train down here, so. There's a said so I'm in the shed in the outhouse behind the house here in Wales uh, for at least I think I think they're saying if you're symptom free it's like at least a week if you're choosing to self isolate and then it's two weeks if you've got symptoms but so it's kind of bizarre I mean I'm literally in here and they prepped it for me and um, and I've unpacked a load of stuff I've got like books out on a little desk trying to get all some work but I at the moment they're passing me meals so like they come out the back door. <laughs> And they put it on the floor. Just slide it underneath <laughs> the door. And then they, sh- and then I shut the door, and I and we're talking across the like the passageway, you know. So, but I realised I started to get really bugged out yesterday, and, and I realised the thing that bugs me out because we can see each other, and like we, we we went for a walk, and I was like two meters apart because that's what they're saying, right? You know, six foot, or whatever. Mm. And um, and obviously I'm like not symptom free and blah blah blah. But I realised the thing that really bugs me out is to know that you actually can't like. Touch anybody. Yeah. Touch yeah. somebody else. That's the thing that really both. I mean, that's completely new. You realize that that's actually completely new for your brain. Yeah. Like, my brain yeah. has not encountered that. I mean, that is literally like cognitive dissonance. In that, it was like my brain has never, nature, nurture, whatever, you know, millions of years of humanism has never encountered this before. So it's like, and I remember I got quite distressed yesterday. I was a bit like my nephews are inside, kind of going, hi. And I was like, I want to give those little mothers a hug. Mm-hmm. You know? Yep. Well, Someone needs to bring got, you a dog. And I, I want to get. I, I got quite upset. I was like, "This is bugging me out, dude." And I like, went for a walk around the garden, like you know, we walked around the circle like twenty times. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, really strange. That was, that was uh, me. And, I, I realized probably a day or two ago that, like, I guess, like subconsciously, me and Brandy hadn't really been hugging either, even though we've obviously been living in the same apartment. And I just like, it, I, I got really overwhelmed by it too, and was just like. Wait a minute! I need to hug my wife like right now, like this very second, because I yeah. just realized that we just kind of sub. I guess I don't know. It just it just ha- didn't do it. Uh, even though you know we obviously were sleeping in the same bed and whatever, but like it was just yeah, it was a weird moment. I actually had a dream last night that uh, this is how weird this this whole thing is to me because like obviously when you're stressed about things, you have dreams that will res- you know will will 
if you know what you're stressed about, you can look at your dream and be like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. That's all connected or whatever. But, like, I, I had multiple dreams last night that were all, you know, one of them, the main one was me and my buddies were hanging out. And we were getting, it was, like, a bunch of our friends from back in college and stuff. So, like, all the Mobile guys, Ian and Neil and all them, all them guys. And I, uh, we got together for something. And, like, about halfway through, I realized, I was like, oh, guys, y'all, the coronavirus is happening right now. Like, we need to we should not be doing this dude. It's like, we gotta, we gotta go. And like, it was, it was weird to realize that like my dreams are literally just what's happening in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. is not normal. Like that's not usually the way my dreams work. I've heard a few friends of mine who are not even necessarily in the creative spheres. You know what I mean? Like in used to having like weird creative dreams or whatever, just like having some properly like interesting, like slightly apocalyptic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> People like, yeah. Had this had this weird dream, like had this weird dream that every that a, a tsunami flooded the flooded the world. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like yeah, but see, yes, I want I wonder what that's about. Well, you know, see, mine, so mine like, are normally that way. This one is just like it's just what's happening in the world exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like that's the yeah. weird part, or not strange, yeah. but it's completely normal. I have uh, I have not had any of those yet. Um, for whatever reason, like it's been a you know I've been like really cognizant of like everything that's going on and stuff but it's not uh it hasn't brought on any uh extreme stress other than just like a little bit of cabin fever which is weird because yeah, it's not like i don't leave my apartment like i take rid you know we take the dog out on a walk uh he's loving it because we're here all the time and we yeah. take it on a walk like every day because that's all that we can do instead of just like hey well, go into the yeah. backyard real quick but I think I like I can go for a walk because I'm here, and even though I'm wanting to make sure I stay away from people, just out of the abundance of the advice, because I've been on a long haul flight for a week, I can. Yeah. The car <laughs> that the, there's a little car here that like I can use, and it's in the park garage way. So I literally have been like leaving the shed, going the car, and yesterday I drove up the mountain and then just walked across the hill so I can get out. But it made me I still felt cabin fever, -y having done that, and I realised the thing that's making me feel cabin fever, even though I can get out of the house, is actually. The, it's the lack of contact thing. It's the knowing yeah. that you can't yeah. be in contact is the thing that actually is. That's like the fundamental dynamic underneath it, which is more distressing. Yeah. I mean, obviously, don't get me wrong. It's still much better to be able to go and walk in the fresh air than not. Like it would yeah. be worse. It would be worse. But you know, it it was like it doesn't. It was. It makes me think about that as the essential thing about. Makes me realise in a way I've never really realised before that, of course, one of those truths that you uh, take to be self-evident, but maybe it's never been stress tested, as they like to say, is that you know to be a person is to be a person with other people, you know, and um, yeah, and that we live in community and we only exist with others, you know, you don't exist mm -hmm. in isolation. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, well, go ahead. I was gonna say, yeah, it's just I think some of it too is like leaving. In like going well, what are my options today? Stay in home, stay at home, and like uh, work, watch movies, play video games, whatever, or go to the grocery store. It's like there's no other, yep. like there's not really anything out. Like it's not like oh maybe I'll go see a movie tonight, or oh maybe I'll go to a concert or something tonight. Like there's no, none of that is on the table. There's no you know like you're not going to, even if they're open, you should not be going to any of those places. And so it's like basically your options are well. I guess I could go back to the grocery store again, or uh, I guess I could just walk around the block real quick. All right, that was it. Yeah, <laughs> that's that, that's my plan. What are your plans tonight? I don't know. Might go to Rite Aid. Walk, <laughs> walk around the block once. Yeah, uh, yeah. No. Anybody else want to come? <laughs> I, you know, everyone's having these like idle thoughts about like doing some practical things, and obviously, I mean, I mean, partly I'm just like applying for loads of work because it occurred to me, and a few other freelance friends I know, you know, are just like actually, like my brother's wife is also a freelance copywriter and has her own little business, and she said there's been a massive spike in like people sending out things over the past week, and I've noticed a little bit of it in, in other ways. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I do some like online voiceover stuff as well, and I've noticed that there's been a bit of a spike in requests for things. So obviously, lots of stuff's being made, but there's going to be a shift in the workforce, and you know. So obviously, I was just like, there's probably lots of freelance stuff to where I need to do that anyway. Yeah. Um, but apart from that, I actually did wake up this morning being like a little bit of the news again, and I was like, all those idle thoughts about trying to be to better yourself and just to get on with some things and to focus. But actually, it was like day three this morning, waking up and going. Actually, that actually might just be necessary, not just for some sense of like 
it's beneficial to do something to keep you know just for the sake of my like my own career but i was like i actually might really need to do that just for the sake of like feeling all right Mm -hmm. you know to have something that you literally set your mind to you know obviously apart from just you know day-to-day work stuff which i've got to do we all have to do you know apply for work as i normally do but probably more than before but i also was like i need i probably should set myself a task you know i'm gonna try and read this big book or whatever you know just something to keep myself keep your mind fully engaged as much mm-hmm. as you can because otherwise i think it's your imagination just stews doesn't it? i know mine does if i read the news too much i want to ration it to just like once or twice a day oh yeah i am uh i'm like a little bit burnt out on the news we're having to stay away from the news <laughs> like i mean i haven't watched anything like I, I haven't watched any uh like you know news coverage or anything like that I, i'm just getting stuff from like the internet but I've stayed, yeah. like, you know, I'll check out, like, I check out what's going on on Twitter. But there's just so much, like, uh, negativity and stuff about it, too, that's like, yeah, I get it. You know, I'm like, I, I just, I don't think that every, you know, I think that it's important to get the news out there and stuff. But I don't think it's important to, like, figure out every single angle yes. about like you know like oh like how does this make this you know what's the it would, sure would be nice if this was around or something like that I'm like you know yes but at the same time like i don't know i just feel like we gotta we gotta calm down a little bit yeah i, no, I'm, I just I'm right said there nothing oh 100 percent. i mean it's just i mean like the the main thing i've taken from it is like i don't feel like an expert in anything i'm grateful to have a big brother who actually like is a scientist and works in like biotech finance and understands a lot of the shit and is laying it out but it just seems as much as it's possible like there's something eminently simple about the advice which is actually easy to follow if you just like try and calm yourself down which is like stay still as much as you can you know keep your distance yeah. and wash your hands like that's about it right mm-hmm. i mean yep. that literally is about it yeah, the only I mean, other I think... thing, I'm, the only other thing I'm holding in mind myself is like I want to just try and it's, uh, just try and keep as healthy as I can, eat as healthy as possible. I yeah. mean, that's all. That's all I got. But that seems to be the advice, isn't it? Isn't that the advice? It seems to be. It's just like yeah. don't go out well, much, think, stay away, wash your hands. I think that's part of what like I mean, well, it's a bunch of things. I think people have been saying that advice for like pretty strongly for a little while now, and a lot of fools refuse to listen, which is irritating. And then, oh, yeah, God, in the States, particularly, right? I saw some I tweets, mean, you know, people are like, I'm 30 years old and feel fine. I'm going to do whatever the hell I want. Yeah, <laughs> it was it's like, like that, that. That's a big reason I had to stop getting on, you know, I'm, I'm even like limiting all of that, like Instagram and all those things for myself because I was getting to the place where it, like it made me so mad. I was like, guys, and so, anyways, I just I needed to be done with it. But it's I think not about it's not about you, my friends. Yeah, and it's like the simplicity of the advice is, I think, the thing that makes people feel so uneasy. You know, it's like it doesn't mm-hmm. feel like we're doing. We're not. We're literally not doing anything. That's the thing to do is to not do anything, mm-hmm. which seems Im- simple and easy. But but that leads you to you know because we are who we are. We are humans who want to be in control of the things that scare us. Uh, yeah, that's that's really the scariest thing about it is that like. You have no control. The only control you have is to be by yourself, you know, and like just slow down and stop. And like, that's the thing. That's the thing to do, which is kind of, I mean, Coulter texted earlier this morning, which I, I, I think is very true in that, like, I actually think that there's a lot of good to come. I mean, obviously, with all due respect to all of the pain and suffering and things in, in the world, I think there's a lot of good to come from something like this for humans is just to be like hey maybe we're not so in control as what we think we are and maybe we should be a little more in touch with that idea oh um, yeah that we just we just don't get to write our destiny you know like we we're just we're here and we got to do the best we can well it's also about how long those things last right in terms of yeah like any change in behavior both internal and external is i mean you can have short sharp shocks that can like massively alter your short sharp shock crises you know that can massively alter your sense perception about the world i think like the last one in my lifetime or our lifetime i can think about is probably 9 11 you know in terms of the immediacy of something but it didn't alter uh, i mean physical behaviors and things like that weren't altered by that unless of course you lived in downtown manhattan i mean but it was more of that sort of short sharp crisis impact event but in terms of the countries we've been living in but 
if this rolls on for months and months, which they're saying it might do, you know, that's a concert, that's a serious amount of time for anybody, even the most, even the, even a human who is like least likely to spend time considering they're in a world, yeah. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? There's going to be, it's like, a, there's going to be a certain amount of enforced meditation on, on everyone. That yeah. I think if it goes on for that long, you know, it, there's a chance that let's say if it was they managed to contain things hypothetically and and then after a month they release some of the measures and, the, you know, the healthcare systems feel they can cope in some way. It seems unlikely, to be honest, right at the moment. But then you can see that maybe it might be something that's more shrugged off. But equally, you can think if it's something that extends for four months in a sort of serious fashion, that the impact of what that will feel like on people's like outlooks and behaviors and how they think about being in the world and what they do, you know, all those things like big fundamental questions could seriously, like there could be a radical shift in some way. I mean, I know it sounds vague to say it like that, but you can see that length of time having that effect. potentially. Well, and it's funny too, that all that's happening. I mean, from, you know, from the American perspective on an election year, Oh, dude, you know, where it's like, uh, well, we all have plenty to think about, <laughs> We have plenty to think about and plenty of time to be thinking on it. Yeah, there's uh, also the sense of the boomerang effect could be very strong, you know, in terms of people aren't allowed to touch each other. If that runs on for like four months, yeah. you know, imagine if once they finally go, <laughs> hey, you're allowed to touch each other again. There's going to be a lot of babies born nine months after that. Mm. Oh, yeah. You know, <laughs> it's going to yep. be a party. Or babies born nine months from now with everybody. Oh, like, from now, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, uh, yeah. True. Absolutely. Well, the uh, good news is y'all, y'all have y'all been following South Korea's situation at all? No. I've, I, I I read about it this morning Mostly. a little bit. I've been I've been trying to to look to our South Korean friends for a little bit of hope, and they're they're giving it. I mean, from what it looks like, um, they're saying they've had three days in a row where uh, the the uh, uh, you know the tests for coronavirus have gone down every day. Like the positive numbers have gone down every day, three days in a row now. Nice. Um, so they're, but they're, they're they've been put, South Korea have been testing. They tested everybody, man. Yeah. It's like yeah. incredible. Like even people who were not like symptomatic, they tested everyone. There was that incredible well, that's the stat. Only way like, to four, find out, yeah, you have yeah, to yeah. test everybody. Exactly. That's the incredible stat. Like four days ago, it was just only four days ago. Seems again, it seems like another era where they were like ten thousand people have been tested in the whole of America. Where in South yeah. Korea, they've been testing 10,000 people a day, mm-hmm. yeah. right? And there was that incredible graph, I don't know if you saw it, comparing the age range ratios um, yeah. in South Korea compared to Italy. And in South Korea, the symptomatic people in the age range 20 to 35 was at something like 40%. You know, it was a high number. It was like not far off from what it was with the, um, <clears throat> with the old people. But they yeah. were all they were all surviving, but they had but they had the disease, and there was like huge. But in Italy, the numbers were like that for the young people, and of course, what, yeah. that, what that realized was that it's not that the young people in Italy don't have it; it's just that they're only they they've been only tested. been they've only been testing people who seem to have symptoms. Whereas what the South Korea one showed was that all these young people who feel fine have it and are spreading it, you know, and that's yeah. what that's what the necessity for mass testing. You just wonder what the fuck is going on mm-hmm. in like these so our so called like high tech liberal democracies that that shit can't be going can't be happening. You know, it seems yeah. bad. Um, in other news, well, in the same news, but uh, in we very weird, funny news. Speaking of uh, you know things that we that we normally talk about uh, in the Arctic, the Guardian, there's a uh, an article about the German. Big Brother, which is being filmed in Cologne. I'm Germany. Uh, and the contestants on the show uh, do not know anything about the coronavirus. Oh. <laughs> As in, like, they have been completely isolated off from... They're the last people yeah. on planet Earth uh, to know about the coronavirus. Wow. I think that's probably n- not a good thing for them in the long run. Yeah. I think uh, so. Also, someone's going to win. They're going to the come out there like, "I'm going to win." The producers are defending the uh, defending it by being like, uh, "We'll update them if any of their family members get it, um, and uh, we're we're taking extra precautions uh, in in cleaning up the set and stuff like that." And they're like, oh, "Okay." Uh, 
oh no, this is no. Excuse me, this is why the article was written. But after an uproar on so- social media, the the channel changed its position and announced a live special episode due to air before the regular slot at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. So tonight in which the housemates will be told of the growing crisis. Oh, God. <laughs> that's, that's, that's brutal. Awesome. It's like, hey, uh, by the way, everybody's sick. All right. <laughs> Let's keep doing hey, Big Brother. Uh, you're safer, but you're safer inside. Yeah. Wow. That's insane. The German residents themselves are conducting an accidental experiment in social distancing. That is funny. Wow, oh, man. Oh boys, what's going to so happen? So what are you guys what ta- what what task are you guys going to set yourself? Uh I'm going to read this book for those of you who are not watching on uh I can't see that book. What is it? What does it say? Oh, Michael Sh- Sh- Michael Chabon, Chabon, yeah. Chabon. The uh The Amazing Adventures of Cavalier and Clay by Michael Chabon. 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 Uh, it's very long. Chabon. And I'm going to read it. That's one of my projects. I'm also going to build some uh, Lego sets. You know, stuff I do. The huge. We'll probably, we ordered a bunch of uh, pebbles, uh, pea gravel, if you will, river stones for the uh, the backyard to uh, oh, yeah. to rock it up. Uh, so that's another big project. You know, do a little backyard work, get it ready for uh, barbecue season if that if that comes about. I assume it'll come about. It has I mean, to end it, eventually. It, you know it what I mean? All these people who are like, who know it could go on for years. And I'm like, I mean, you know, th- this isn't real people. This is people on the internet. I mean, this is internet talk. But I'm just like, guys, like, I don't know. I mean, like, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a super big deal. But, like, either for better or worse, it's going to end. Like, it might just end with all of our old people dying. But, like, it is going to end. Like, we just don't yeah. want it to end badly. But it's not like... Uh, I don't, you know, I, 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 I feel like, uh, I feel, I feel like there's a, there's gotta be a healthy like balance of like, it's a very serious thing. we got to do something about it. But like thinking about it every single day and going like, they're, they're just, I, I guess that's the thing. There seems to be an addiction to the, uh, to the negative yes. aspects of it that I'm seeing. 100%. Like people want to get mad at it and they'll like look for whether, you know, I'm no fan of. Uh, the current administration or how they're handling things but people are like looking for something new every single day to Dude, go like look I'll, at how they I'll look at how they you. messed this up look at how they messed this up and i'm like i don't care anymore at this point in time i'm just yeah. like stop just stop like yeah. we know they're messing so, up I will, I will say like yeah i mean i'm obviously with you on that and like you know the first that's pretty much the news that me and brandy have watched every day was you know the the press conferences or whatever from the from the from the team um and all of them were extremely irritating uh but i I will say for the first time ever ever i will have a non-negative thing i mean i'll have a neutral thing to say about the president uh which is that like at least yesterday it was like they gave real advice real guidelines it seems to be like hey this is real and this is our this is what we're doing to to deal with it and like so that was the first time I was like, oh, actually, I feel a little bit better now. Like, mm-hmm. you know, like you guys seem to actually be doing work and not saying, I mean, you know, uh, I keep holding on to the fact that he said it was a hoax, you know, like two oh, weeks yeah. ago. Um, you heard it here but, first, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Peter Korn endorses Donald Trump for president 2020. Wow. Did you just give us a sound bite? Air horn. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Gunshot. But, but it's just like, cause I, that's, that was my thing was like, you know, I've, I've talked to some people back home who've been like, whatever, you just want Donald Trump to fail. And I'm like, I really don't. I, yeah. I really don't. I want him to do great. Do I think uh, that there I are some him. people who do? Absolutely. Sure. And yeah. those people are assholes. Uh, I, I want him to like, to be a brand new guy and knock this thing out of the park. Um, you know, and, and yesterday was the first little bit of like, Hey man, cool. Thank you. Thanks for, for actually like, you know, whether I, I, it, I think he was pretty collared, you know, I think people said, mm-hmm. Hey, if you go out there and do anything other than take this seriously, then like we're in big trouble. Um, but I mean, I noticed even today, I mean, over the last two days, 
the streets have been less busy. Like, mm-hmm. I, I don't know if that's because of the news or for whatever, but uh, I think it's because it's, of the Mel Brooks and Max Brooks PSA. To be, it's quite hard to honest. tell here because I'm in a village in rural West Wales, right? And so it's like yeah. things tend things tend to be a bit. So quiet, there's not but... a lot of people on the streets, just in general. <laughs> Yeah, but there is. Um, I mean, I'm actually just not going into the village just to do like the week's self yeah. isolation because, mm-hmm. I mean, I feel fine. It's blah blah blah, etc. But you know, just for the sake of the population here is generally a bit older as well, so I just feel like it's a sensible thing to do. But my little yeah. brother's been up, and he was like, "People are fine, but people are like, you know, if you're doing the steps apart thing now." And um, a couple of the shops, the people working behind the counters have gloves on, and if yeah. you're using your, if you're, t- if they have to take your card, they're giving it back using the receipt as a means to return it instead of touching it. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. I've been man. going to the store with Clorox wipes. I've been just touching everything with a Clorox wipe. I mean, Dude, I when I go on the plane back, I got this hand, I got given, <laughs> a friend of mine in Nashville gave me this big thing of alcoholic wipes. And I got, I literally felt like a crazy person. I was like, I have OCD. Yeah. You know, I should say, I shouldn't say that because Christ, you know, like, but you know what I mean? As in, yeah. it was like, felt like unnecess- obsessive behaviors that feel instinctively yeah. unnecessary, you know? Like yeah. I, I got them and I was like wiping down the handles of my seat and I was like, what am I doing? Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, I, I did that at the grocery store today. I didn't pick up anything without a Clorox wipe. But my thinking on that is like, yeah, like, do I find this a little embarrassed? Like, oh, two weeks ago, would I have been embarrassed to do that? Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, am I am I embarrassed now to take an extra step that is of no cost to me to like exactly to not you know to maybe not inf- infect one of the fine people working at the grocery store who? But also, you it's, know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, it says a really interesting is. thing. It says, also, it says a really interesting thing about the nature of sanity, right? Things that, like, the sanity, of course, is not just about someone's internal world. It's about, like, their behavior or what they say in comparison to the rest of the world, right? Yeah. That's what, yeah. that's what, that's, that's what, that's the nexus of what sanity is judged by. You know, if the whole of the world, like, says we are humans and someone goes, I am a fish, they go, you're crazy. Because everyone else, if everyone else in the world were like, I'm a fish, then they'd be like, cool, you know, but it's one of those yeah. things that, like, normally obsessively wiping down, like, groceries, <laughs> everyone be yeah. like, Who's, who's the crazy person in the, in the house? But now, because it's a normal thing, no one thinks it's weird. It's like it becomes, is it within the space of days, something which would have been mm-hmm. considered to be eccentric and or maybe obsessive or a bit strange has like transferred out of the same, the, the, um, the world of the disordered to the ordered. Just like I that. I will say, yeah. hopefully this makes us just cleaner in general because from what I've yeah. heard, like we should, we should be doing that on every airplane we get on anyways. Because before coronavirus... They were not cleaning those things. And that's why you get Dude. sick from – it's not the recirculated air in airplanes. It's They don't clean the – certain. they don't come around and flip – do you think that they come around after every flight, flip down every single tray table, and wipe and it wipe off it. with a disinfectant? Yeah. Not, not, a, not a chance. No chance. Not a chance in hell. Okay. I've seen how long it takes – they deplane the plane, and then you get immediately on the plane after that. They didn't have time to yep. go through and wipe everything. No. Yeah, so, and I yeah. have in recent years every long haul flight I've like, felt rubbish for just a week afterwards without without fail. You yeah, know. because they don't clean those things. Yeah, dude. And actually, apparently the um the the um regurgitated air thing is not the thing. Like you said, like yeah. a lot of that stuff is, you know, because obviously surfaces. that literally obviously that literally doesn't make sense because it's not airtight. <laughs> you know, what I mean, yeah. otherwise you just suffocate, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah it does come from the outside, of course. Um, oh no! It actually is circulated, so it's pressurized. Uh, so they have oxygen canisters and stuff in there where they uh, they oxygenate the air. So it is just uh, recirculated air. Uh, but that's oh, not where the that's not where the d- disease and germs come from. They come from the surfaces. Wow! I will say, as someone who yeah. has seasonal allergies right now, uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, not that comforting. Every time I'm like, oh man, I'm coughing and my nose is running. I'm like, oh wait. I always do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's yeah, like par- paranoia about <laughs> symptoms, right? Me too. I'm starting to get a bit sneeze. I can feel it brewing because spring is changing here and I can already feel the tickle. But yeah, suddenly, like, right. what? What? <laughs> What's going on? Oh, wait, no. <laughs> this always happens. It's just March. <laughs> but also, sneezing is not one of the main uh, that no, is not, yeah. common yeah. symptoms. But, I mean, yeah, I mean, my, my whole thing, I, 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 I me and Coulter have talked about this and you know, my parents want me to come home real bad. And I'm just like, look, I, you know, if this is like a months and months and months worth of thing, then like, yeah, I'll go home at some point. But like, 
uh, for like the next two weeks, it's like I'm I'm operating on the assumption that I just have it. Like, I mean, I'm in New York City. Why? Why? The chances of me not touching something that somebody's coughed on in the subway or at work or whatever is like, you know. I, I think that's, that's true, I'm, dude. That's... I had the same thought this morning, which is that if that thing, that graph, for example, about people being tested in North Korea in our age groups, yeah. you know, and it's yeah. like the people even hardly know they got it. You know, I had the same thought. I was like, shit, you know, it may be that actually, you know, that I might it might just be worth my while. Sitting, I've been saying they say if you feel symptom free and you can travel, give yourself a week or whatnot. But I was like, it might be worth my while just to like chill out here for a full two weeks just to make sure I know that. Yeah, it's it's rolled through the system, even mm-hmm. if I'm hardly feeling anything, you know. Well, that's that's what I told my parents. And my concession to them was because they they really wanted us, you know, because they live in the middle of the mountains, in the middle of nowhere, and uh, and they're like, just come down here, it'll be way more peaceful than New York. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not moving for two weeks. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, we're gonna stay in the house, and that way, you know, if after two weeks we don't get sick, I think we can pretty reasonably think we don't have it because we're not going out and doing anything yeah uh, that's, like, that's wise, know, man. But, but we're also like you know the other part about it is that like we still just i mean um, and this is the the time thing again you know it was a week ago we thought it couldn't live on surfaces for more than three hours now we know that's not true oh say uh, that again sorry it doesn't it lives for longer they, than three they, hours yeah it can live up to, on a surface for up to like three days or something Oh, dang. That's what that, that's what they uh, that's what some of they have been saying. Um, but but the point of that, whether that's whatever the truth is on how long it's like, we just don't know. So it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. To, to run around all over the place under the assumptions of what we know today. Um, mm. Next week is just like doesn't make any sense. Um, so it's just like, yeah, you know, we're just holding it down and trying to figure out a way to keep our spirits high and. You know, I'm, I'm going to try and drum. I'm drumming up some work today, as a matter of fact, doing some copywriting work and writing some articles about motorcycles. I guess um, I'm going to start looting. Yeah, good call. I'm going to do some looting as well. I thought I'd do some looting. Loot some some hay and some. I thought I might go. Feed. Yeah, so exactly going to go and loot a few bit of sheep feed up from the hill. You know, do a little bit. I might do a bit of rioting in one of the lower, one of the lower hill farms. You, you should know? get a do a bit of. You rioting. should go get a uh, tricorn hat and a frock coat and become a highwayman. The question is yeah. whether can I um can you can you riot by yourself? Uh, yeah. You could definitely if you get a flintlock pistol and a and a rapier <laughs> and a tricorn hat and a frock coat, you can definitely <laughs> highwayman by yourself. <laughs> <laughs> you just need a little like a black scarf you pull up over your nose and then you know. deliver your money or your life Stand yeah to deliver yep. your, your sheep feed or your life yeah. <laughs> I have oh 10 pounds uh silver sterling on my head <laughs> give me your corgi or die yeah so here's here's the question for for you, C. Bob. Well, for for everybody, really is. So and, and Howell, I guess. So if if we're if we are, oh, how disappeared. Oh, sorry, I don't know what uh, happened. Oh, right. There you go. Um, if we, at what point can we hang out with other quarantined people? That's what I need to know. You can hang well, out. From, you're uh, not, none of us are like unless you're going on quarantine because you suspect you have been interacting with somebody. Like if you've been going places like to the store and stuff, we what we are doing. So basically, this is this is some of the misinformation. What we are doing yeah, is social ex- explain distancing. It to me. What we're doing is social distancing. Quarantining is for if you have it. Well, excuse me. Howell is quarantining. Uh, you know, I'm uh, quarantining out just because I've been on a long haul flight, and then yeah, you know, and then yeah, took, it's just an, it's an what? about abundance of caution because my little brother and his wife and the kids have come to the house here because he has asthma, and it's UK government advice that people with asthma need to self isolate. So they are just here, and I just thought, um, you know, just for the sake of it, I should just like be yeah. here in the shed for the short term and like we will to answer your question pete like i'm going to you know give myself at least sort of whatever 10 days max i mean a minimum i think until if i'm still feeling completely fine then i'll go and join them in the house you know because yeah. uh, i think then we'll, we'll all be able to be okay in that respect but yeah i think it's yeah. like otherwise otherwise it's like c bob said i think it's just like what they call the old social distance yeah here you go 
So this is from NPR. So the quarantining is basically like you stay inside your – if you think you have come into contact with someone who, someone who has it, not think. If you know you, I have come into yeah. contact with someone who's tested positive or you are symptomatic yourself, you stay yeah. in your apartment and you do not leave. Yeah. You have people Full come bring quarantine. you stuff. You That's it. Yeah. You don't go anywhere. If yeah. any other thing that is social distancing, it means – so here, this is from NPR.org. Uh, I'm not sick or exposed. What else can I do? What is social distancing? This is a broad category. It means not shaking hands, avoiding crowds, standing several f- feet from other people, and most important, staying home if you feel sick. Uh, businesses are doing it when they ask people to work from home or stagger work hours. Government's doing it when they close schools. We're seeing it in the sports world with no spectator games or the postponing of sporting events. Museums, theaters, and concert halls where large groups of people gather are closing their doors. It means trying to find the least crowded train car or possibly driving instead of taking mass transit. It's about taking stock, how closely you interact with people on a day-to-day basis, increased distances, cut out handshakes. I mean, there's no, like, we can just, we can hang out, you know what I mean? Like, we can go do stuff. There's no, like, unless, like, there's no point in quarantining in, like, semi, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, yeah. there's a, uh, yeah, I guess guys, there's a point. You guys, like you, you guys more can you go for limit, a stroll together, man. Yeah, the more you limit interaction with other people, the better. I think that everybody who's, like, I, I think that there's, like, a whole big thing of, like, self-isolation or quarantining and social distancing and everybody's mixing everything up together. Obviously, like, yeah, yeah. the more you can stay home, stay home. <laughs> the more you can stay home, stay home. But the, um, you know, if you don't, uh, if you aren't sick or or haven't come into contact with anybody who has been tested positive for it, you don't need to necessarily like, like you're not. So this is what I'm yeah. asking. When, at what point do we do we go and drink beers on the roof or together or have beers in the backyard and grill out? I think we can do that. Whatever, you can do just that. as long as we don't like stand that close to each. I mean, you, are you going to the grocery store? Me right now? No. No, I mean like in in life, like this week. Are you going to go outside your apartment and go to a store? Like you went to Wild Olive yesterday, right? Or I went to before? this morning. This morning, this yeah. Morning. There you go. Yeah. I mean, what's the difference between that and like getting beers in the backyard? As long as you limit your your exposure to other people, I think I think that's some of it is like. There's not been really good communication for. Yeah, it's conf- it's confusing, you know. Like that's that's the, that's the kind of the, the thing. And I, I, I feel confused by it, and I'm you know I don't consider myself like I'm you know I'm trying to learn and figure it all out. Um, but it feels like you know anytime I even time I've left the apartment is like okay like it's it's on full blown apocalypse mode. Um, no and and i think that's that's an unhealthy mindset to like i mean not to say i mean i get that for sure i think it's just a for your own sanity you just gotta like the thing you just gotta remember is like don't touch people's hands just just imagine everybody out in the world has the flu or has a cold not even just like or just has something you know the closer you get to somebody the more yeah risk you put on them or something like that so you know if you're uh luckily i mean now that now that most work has shut down if you have to take mass transit or something like that i don't think any of the car subway cars are going to be that crowded like yeah don't don't you know obviously i still saw like last week people like touching on the handrails um oh yeah i think you know until until my work shuts down i think i probably i probably will go in tomorrow dude Um, get a get a get a bicycle I have a bicycle. Yeah, I mean, that might be a thing to do in New York, right? You want to avoid the subway. It's nice and flat. Get a bike. It's 45 degrees and raining right now. Uh, I'm not doing that. I do have a car, though. Oh, yeah. The red. They just need to suspend parking rules right now. That's what I've decided. Yeah, there are also other ways to, like, you know, I feel like it's it's not just positives, but just, like, slightly adapting other routines like maybe you've got to get to midtown leave an hour earlier have a lovely walk through the park for an hour you know mm-hmm. um you know things like that or you know like take like, as well as well as thinking about the things positive things you can do at home if you want to try and uh, twist um some of the things that might feel more restrictive into something else potentially yeah. even with like daily routines 
I'm, I'm going leather gloves. There you go. Good uh, call. Yeah, you know. Good uh, call. And then uh, with the with the knuckle holes cut out. You know, yeah. Virus can't right. get in through the knuckles. That's what mm. I heard. Uh, yeah. So I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of like, uh, just you know, the idea is like be as mindful and. If you can stay home and work from home, just do that. Instead, you know, like it's just limit as much contact as possible, um, yeah. and don't be in enclosed spaces as much as possible. So that's what I'm saying. Like, I think, yeah, you know, if we want to hang out on the roof, we'll just you know hang out af- away from you know, not like all up on each other's business like we normally are. You know, no sitting. You can't sit in my lap like normal. I and mean, it's might not even be worth it to hang out then. Yeah, that's kind of my my biggest thing. The yeah. only time you can sit in someone's lap is on the subway if in order to not touch the pole. Then you can sit all, in I, all I say is this, is I went for like two nights ago when I got back, I went for a walk down to the seafront with my brother's wife and my two nephews, and they stayed like two meters apart from me and blah, blah, blah. And we stood on the seafront, and they got a drink, and, um, and I was standing two meters away. And I was like, what have you told the kids? Because they were like, Uncle Owl, Uncle Owl. And I went, oh, we just told them that you really stink and they can't go near you. <laughs> and I was like, so now the so now my nephew Win who's like three every time he sees me he goes stay away stinky stinky <laughs> owl and I was like wow we're laying some deep neural pathways in that child man if this goes uh-huh. on for too long he's going to be like I'm just going to become stinky I can't Uncle hang out stinky. with my stinky Uncle Howl stinky Un- Uncle Stank yep old die stank oh. back yep <laughs> well uh, alright boys we uh we certainly have had uh, had an episode. Um, you can find us no, nowhere out and about. To be completely honest, basically, no way. Uh, you can find us. You can find me in Central Park at like four thirty uh, on most days because that's my basically getting out. Uh, yell at us for how wrong we are about everything, either about how unsafe we're being or how we're overreacting. I'm sure you're right. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you can do that at firescapepod at gmail.com or firescapepod on any of the social medias. I hope you enjoyed watching us sit. Uh, yep. And yeah. You can find me cool. at Colter Leva. You can find me on the Instagram, buttermilk underscore Pete. And you can find you can, f- you can find me in the shed. shed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in all of your in sheds, he's, he's back there. Yeah. All right, everybody, rule, 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 now, rule. with the beer we got. I mean, the beer we got drank pretty good, don't it?